Hello everybody, welcome to the AeroBB quarterfinal between Elliot and Hancock, two of the massive names in this cycle. Hancock is down TV and has got himself an extra apothecary. He's got four rerolls as well. I wonder if he should have ditched a reroll to get a wizard. Um, it's Elliot Stadium, which he has not improved his stadium because he was replacing players for all three seasons and then miraculously he's had a run of no deaths and gone up to 13 players amazing Elliot's timing for his um, deaths and stuff has been impeccable he lost a few trees but it, you know the trees don't really matter right he's got uh, two dancers that can do things and he's got an edge up with blood sure hands and a move up with sidestep leap uh, sprint your feet and the rest you know don't really matter right he's got four great players I guess I guess these two aren't great, right? But they're still dancers. They're still dancers. He's got two dancers and two great players. Um, no guard, though, right? I guess that's his weakness. No guard. Whereas Aincock has got two guard and some blood steppers. He's got the edge five guy with strip, but the strip is not so good versus the uh, sure hands there. He's got a couple of diving tacklers and a strength up. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty good for Elliot, actually. It's true, it's true, but they're still, like, they're not that amazing, are they, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, not like a strength 4, or an edge 5, or, or something. But yeah, it, it's a good player, it's a good player. The lack of guard is a bit, uh, a bit sucky. Hello, Thulean, it is a hell of a matchup, isn't it, yeah. Unfortunately for Ancock, meeting Eliod at the quarter-final stages could mean the end of his cup run. We all expect, we all expect Eliod to win the tournament, but... <laughs> Thanks for asking, Steve. Not a lot of people know this, <laughs> but... <laughs> After 30 games of continuously building my team and making it the best wood, uh, best Dark Elf team I've ever had. Tragically, <laughs> in the 30th game, I lost a Strength 4 uh, Wrestle Tackle Witch Elf Leap. So that was like having a Strength 4 war, war, a strength four war Dancer with Frenzy and Jump Up, right? Incredible, incredible. Best player I've ever had. Only had Strength 4 for a couple of games and then it was gone. Diced. That's not true, actually. I guess I, I got a leap after it, but didn't have it for long enough. Didn't have it for long enough to really appreciate what an unbelievably good witch it was. But that's over now. <laughs> Daedal had a strength five, edge five dancer, didn't he? <laughs> that was something else. Somebody on Fumble had it as well. Uh, Pigstar69. Had a player uh, who was he was called he was called Vindaloo, and he was uh, he was strength five edge five. I mean that's that's insane, isn't it? Strength five edge five dance at like, Ooh. what can you even do versus that? Ho hope they forget to score on turn eight. I guess <laughs> that's your best <laughs> your best chance. So yep, gets the mighty blow hit, and he does get to push into the tree. <laughs> it is the exact same team, yeah. Literally, it was literally it. The the strength five just leapt in, and smashed the vampire with a ball, <laughs> took the ball off him, ran away, stalled, and then forgot to score. Hello, Tibbam. It is like it's not beautiful, is it? Like it's not crisp, it's not great graphics, but what it is, is kind of clear. It's not. You know, it's not the greatest game ever, but, you know, you can, it's it's kind of bright, isn't it? And you can see the squares and, yep, functional beauty indeed. <laughs> Whoop. So now he's got the sidestepper so he doesn't get pushed into the tree. He learned his lesson after the first one. He's going for the gigantic H cage here. He doesn't need it, right? You just I mean he's already strength four. 
<laughs> I think he should probably be trying to bang on elves a bit more. Engage and, and bang on elves a bit here. And then, you know, use his advantages, which is more guard, more strength, more armor. Try and get in the mixer a bit and fight. He's got a couple of tacklers. He's got diving tackle. Got three diving tackles and two tackles. Some sidestep. Maybe he should be trying to create some contact and uh, outbash these little buggers. Next door. But he doesn't have the mighty blow, does he, for these hits? Well, it seems a bit too timid from Hancock. I feel like he should be piling in. Like he just—he he just needs. Like he doesn't even need guard, right? He literally doesn't even need guard because he's strengthful. So he doesn't need any kind of. Uh, he doesn't need any kind of uh, Venger bus. Oh, he's put that guy next to the tree again. Terrible. You need to not have a guy that can get pushed into the tree. Unless it was a bait to get pushed into the tree, but you know if that's if that's bait, um, <laughs> Elliot's taking it all day. And there you go. Well, I mean, he would have blitzed whatever he hit, but you know he, that he, he did the decision to hit it into the tree. Hello, Chocobo, Chocobo, I've really got no idea what it is. Um, it is High Elves for Hancock and Wood Elves for Eliod. It's not over, but um, Eliod is out bashing this drive because Hancock hasn't like steamed in and tried to make his tackle, armor and guard advantage count. He has been very timid. He's made zero penetration in four turns. Um, I'm not loving it, I've got to be honest. Strategically. <laughs> I do not know, Tulian, I do not know. Do you know, I, I know that the cactus is, uh, there's like a running cactus in Fighting Fantasy. Because I knew a girl who had a tattoo of the cactus from Fighting Fantasy. But that's all I know about fighting fantasy. And there's a bird called Tifa. Tifa. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Tifa. <laughs> there you go. That's that's literally the extent of my final fantasy knowledge. I know a lot more about fighting fantasy. Great books. Smashes. Like a mighty blow dancer is good, right? Because as elves, you're not making much more than 16 blocks per game, and then so the mighty bl and you know they're all coming from your war dancers, and this means most of your blocks have mighty blow like that. It is really good, obviously, having a mighty blower. It basically doubles how much attrition your team puts out. Turn five. <laughs> it's true, Steve. Yeah. It wasn't even fantasy, it was just a dream. Oh wow, he's left this guy hittable, but no mighty blow. But again, no penetration, right? No penetration. Zero. I, this is weird. I don't like this from Hancock. I don't like it. Because you're not making him 3D uphill, you. And Elliot's going to go for the fucking 2D uphill anyway, right? You're not stopping the 2D uphill. Plus he's got Dauntless anyway. So... I don't like this. Exactly, they are both the same armor because he hasn't piled in, right? He has to pile in, uh, make contact, and then use his guards and use his AVA to trade blows. But they're, they're trading blitzes, which is terrible because, yeah, I mean, he's worse than armor 7, right? He's worse than armor 7 against the blitz. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... Wow. Piling to non-pile on, exactly. 
exactly. It's been safer at not getting turned over. But he can't score because um, if he was to, uh, like, you know, if he's potatoes now, he just gets sacked and, and then gets scored on. And he's still in his own half, so he's still pretty pretty likely to get turned over and scored on. So, yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan of the strategy. Obviously, yeah, I did that block to try and free up the dancer, but he's still going to punch with him better than not. Yeah, like, you know, jamming in with blodge steppers and guard and tackle and damning tackle was pretty strong. Really played too timidly, Hancock. I mean, it's cost him this drive almost certainly. <laughs> yes. Indeed, Ordon. Yeah, cramp down one side because the tree, right? The tree, the tree locks down one side, so you've kind of got to commit to the other. I know, I know, Hancock. I know what you're saying. It's understandable as well. Like, do you know what I mean? It's easy to sit here and say he hasn't, he hasn't done anything. But yeah, I guess this way you get to put like a couple of scoring threats in. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you don't have to potato with the ball, do you? Could even pull the ball back as well this turn. Okay, so, oh well, now I hate it. Because roll the double one. You should not have rolled the double one. Very bad to roll the double one. But before rolling that double one, I guess the, the, the strategy could have actually be run away eight, right? Run away eight. And then he can't reach you to sack you. And then you have some scoring threats. But then, of course, if you fail the pass or handoff, you can still count a score. But I guess that's better than getting sacked. Um, he's had shit dice. He's had absolutely shit dice. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Being out banged, rolled air, rolled skulls and and skulls, skulls and snakes. But um. It is, yeah, the replay is amazing, right? It's like sports, isn't it? You know, action replay. And it, it makes it really obvious when you've used a reroll and the dice rerolled and everything. It's just so much better than uh, Blood Bowl 3. Is he going to three dice this guy? I guess this guy's out of range now. Yeah. Sidestepper there. This one is not a sidestepper. There's a chance for Hancock, maybe. Oh, big chance for Hancock, maybe. What a dickhead. <laughs> what a dickhead war dancer. So. I mean, it's it's not a good chance, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Double G if I had to cancel them two. Blitz this guy. Come there, and then put two players there, including a guard. Push him, push him forward, get him into the end zone. That's the play, right? Now, how exactly you do that is up for debate. But, well, him there, he blitzes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G if I... And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then that's how you get the guard in there. And then I guess you could just uh, maybe just do a four plus with a reroll to get in there and cancel them too. This guy's only got tackle. And then uh, 
he runs up and passes. I mean, this is the play. This is the play here. Oh! Oh, so this was a reverse to get him in, in to try and score the catcher. Okay. I don't like it. I guess I don't hate it. But I like my play more. To be honest. Oh. <laughs> Don't want in nine. I mean, is it? Oh no, is it seventy-five percent? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird. Absolutely hopeless. It's so weird. Okay. So yeah, I did. I did prefer trying to uh, trying to chain him forward one. But I mean, I didn't see this backwards chain, to be fair. Um, so, you know, maybe Hancock fixated on the play that he saw and I fixated on the play that I saw. So, and who knows which is better, right? That tends to be what happens when you're playing. You just see, you see a play and then kind of like run with it. Because you've got three minutes in that, haven't you? And uh, you don't like math out one one route compared to another very very rarely but I, I thought that was just a bit too safe and too timid that, that, that's what I would criticise that driver being and then after all that you know ball safety for the whole half that's the problem is when then when you try the, the turn 8 thing if you fail it you just get scored on because elves um, and we've seen so many people do this versus Elliot this season you know I did it right I think I did it against Elliot or he did it against me but you know, whatever. They, that, that's what happens, isn't it? You know, if something goes wrong, it, it, it's like a, it takes away your score and gives them a score as well. Like it's brutal. So I think more, more piling in was necessary to try and, you know, with the sidesteppers were pretty hard to deal with. He's only got the two tacklers, and he he wants to blitz with a mighty blow tackler, and this one doesn't want to be fighting. So he's got no tacklers in the fight. And, you know, you can have at least one tackle in the fight. Um, like, it's not much better. But still, it, I think, you know, use the guard and the armor to fight was, was the play. Is Elliot just going to one turn here? Indeed, Dwyer, yep. Yep. Like the All Men's LOS from Elliot. Cheeky removal. Oh, Power Apple. We are in the playoffs. Completely reasonable. Yeah, I do or don't that. I never scored one turns with. <laughs> like, we're drawing two Edge 5 dancers and an Edge 5 movement 9. Uh, uh, sorry, movement 10 catcher, wasn't it? Or movement 9. I think it was, it was a Natty, wasn't it? It was a movement 10 catcher. And uh, who who might have been edge five as well? I think I think the movement ten catcher was edge five, and then both dancers were edge five as well. And I just scored zero one turns. Oh yeah, I had a natty. Yeah, I had a natty, and I always one turned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, is that a double one? It is. <laughs> Well, he he set up the one turn to just, I guess, to go tune up and kill the game. And uh, he double won the catch. So all of a sudden, Cock is back in it. Obviously, Blitz is the non-sidestep guy. Very bad decision to roll snake eyes. You should not do that as an elf coach. You should always, uh, you know, follow a one with a three. And you'll you'll win nearly every single game if every time you roll a one you roll a three straight after. If you uh, if you roll a one and a two you're usually good. If you roll a one and a one, very very bad. Not a good decision. <laughs> Wait, did didn't dodge away? 
I guess we can sidestep back. Okay, I mean, I would have dodged away. But I guess... Oh my god. Hello, game. Where's the stripper? Here. Hmm. I mean, he can 1D you with the strip, can't he? This is the problem with this. If you go back, it's a little bit harder for him to get round to hit there with a strip. Ah! Uh -huh. They're both on DT. Four. I mean, maybe this is okay. I like that you can sidestep back to here after you get hit. He's not going for the strip. Elliot getting nerfed by seeing that it's a four plus. Terrible play. Should uh, should not have seen the diamond tackling. He'd have been fine. Uh, Elliot tried a, a one turn and failed the catch. I guess there wasn't a chain out with all the sidesteppers and stuff. Double one! The dodge away was a double one. Genius from Hancock to not dodge. I mean, that's the thing, right? It, like, if you dodge, there's a 3% you fail. So if you don't need to dodge, you shouldn't dodge. It's like, that's just correct, right? Never cut a corner you don't need to. Never make a dodge you don't need to. Um, so, yeah, it got, got the ball for the second time. We're gonna push, push down the side. Interesting. Not like recentralizing, not like you know, not cent not recent, not centralizing and restarting the drive. We're gonna push down. You didn't need to one turn. Maybe you just fancied it. <laughs> uh. Because he's got he's got he's got his sure hands right to stop this guy. I mean, this guy's a nightmare if you don't have sure hands. You can't protect the ball. But Elliot's got sure hands, so it's not a, a crazy sacker, right? Like, there's crazy sackers for Elliot. Two crazy sackers for Elliot. Um, yeah, and I guess I guess because because Hancock had set up to stop. Like a normal drive, that made the that made his defence of the one turn horrendous, wasn't it? It was just literally easy to get a push, and then it was like one dodge to score. So why not go for it? So like it wasn't it wasn't a hard one turn, but the problem is it did make him, you know, make some two pluses. Um, whereas if he'd taken it slower, but then you know maybe he's scared of of Hancock, you know, actually initiating contact on defence. Um, Something that I found with my uh, far superior high elf team versus the Skaven that I played um, in the Chalice a few years back. When I was on like defense, it was incredible, like you know, just piling in with the guard and stuff. So maybe Elliot was like scared of of Hancock's defense, uh, just smashing in with guard. There's only two, but still. I mean, that that has to be the answer, right? That he was scared of of Hancock's conventional defense, so just chose to. Uh, Bang it in with the one turn. The lack of a mighty blow hitter is pretty apparent, like there's been no damage. And hardly any hits. I mean that the thing is hardly any hits as well. It's not just it's not just no damage, it's also hardly any hits. Scoring? Nope. This is uh two D on the ball because of this guy. No, he doesn't go doesn't go for it. Interesting. I mean this guy could have just run round and assisted, couldn't he? I'm pretty sure. I don't know where he was. Was he here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, five. I mean easily could have assisted the ball here and then he could have like jumped over or something if he wanted. 
But I guess just go for the safe one and try and pressure it next time. Elliot is by nature a pretty safe player, isn't he? Maybe he's, uh, Chunter would have gone for the ball sack. Orinarian. Oh wow. Okay, so another double one there. Few double ones from Elliot. Not great. Not great tactics to roll uh, these double ones. Hitting the air, it's really hard choice, right? Because hit the dancer is like a monster, but then it's hard to win if you don't if you don't kill the one turner as well. <laughs> Good question, Sambo Simon. Yeah, he needs to practice. He needs to practice his dice rolling, definitely. But you know, Hancock ruled all the schools, didn't he, in the first half? So I guess, I guess Elliot just feels on a bound to to roll these to roll these snakes. Come for the thrower. <laughs> Kill. I forgot this team was like the Kalon Smashers. <laughs> this is, uh. Yeah, so I guess this is. We're gonna score next turn, right? As, as Hancock here, because now the elves, the woodies are surrounding him, and he'll probably try this dodge out at the end. Or leap out. I guess he leaps out? On a three. He dodges to greedily get the um. That I mean that was just wrong, actually, because he's got tackle. <laughs> that was just literally wrong, wasn't it? Uh, he rolled a one anyway. But that's just literally wrong, right? To uh, to dodge there, I think he'd used his reroll for the turn. I guess not. I guess he he could go for on a two or a three. He puts the a uh, puts the blitzer down. Oh, plus he'd be next to the tree. So yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. I feel like leaping is better though. Well, I mean, obviously it's better. <laughs> it's obviously more chance of success leaping. Oh no! <laughs> the absolute derp. The absolute derp from Hancock. I've done that myself. <laughs> I'll just do this safe. I'll, I'll do this first because it doesn't have to roll any dice. <laughs> and then, whoops, he scored. Oh no, disaster. Disaster. That was a quite a good side switch as well, if you've done the blitz first. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I guess everyone's done it right. I guess everyone's done a blood bowl too. So yeah, could have maybe stalled out for 1-1. Um, that was that was a nice little stall, had had it been, you know, had the blitz been made and then, uh, and then not scored. <laughs> but, uh, well... So now, Eliod just has to score in three turns. And not before. And he should be alright. Well, I mean, he will be alright. No, no, not necessarily. Well, movement eight sidesteps. There is a sidestepper. Put sidesteppers on the line now to stop the one turn. Interesting. I think if Elliot one turns, I fancy myself for scoring three. And I don't, what I don't like is giving the mighty blow hit on the sidestep catcher, who is your one turning chance. The Dublay skulls doesn't eat it because there's only three turns left in Elliot's head. You know, maybe maybe there's only three turns left in reality as well. Um, because obviously, if Elliot scores, it's over. There is an there is an element of equity, you know. He could have just eaten that to uh, to have more rerolls for overtime and stuff, but uh, 
I think it's probably correct to uh, use it and and have you know not double score with your best player. <laughs> yeah, I think it could have been an eight turn stall. That was a nice side switch. It was a nice it was a nice side switch attempt. Apart from it being terrible, you know. Apart from that, <laughs> the blood balling idea was good. But the uh, the idea was good, but the execution was was lacking, wasn't it? We've got the diving tackle on the edge five makes it a three plus. Probably still eats the blitz, right? Maybe not. With only two turns for Eliod, he needs penetration. Well, not much though. <laughs> There's only two in. Only one in for that guy. Yeah, so there you go. He's already got two scoring threats. First actions. Now, whack this guy. KO'd. Rottle. It's ridiculous that that's all the, that's all the penetration Elliot needs. Just... Just one inch, <laughs> and he's he's satisfied. <laughs> oh my god, another double one! It's quite nice as well, right? Because like he's so far away, it disguises it a little bit. Like not really, obviously, but you know. Oh my god, dub skulls! This is crazy that like Hancock's just rolled infinite dub skulls, and Elio's rolled a bunch of snakes. Okay, we've got an assist on the ball. And we can block this guy and get the tackles through. This was a bit shit from Elliot, wasn't it? Oh, he followed. Not what I would have done. Who can say if it was good or bad? Oh, I can just come through here. Kind of cheer fire. The dodge through was better, wasn't it? I guess, yeah, getting there to stop the touchdown. This guy should have maybe based him, thinking of the same thing on the other side. Maybe this guy should have stood in front of him. Because, like, if you're going to stand a guy in front of him to, like, kind of stop him as a scoring threat, then you should have done the same in, like, front of both of these. So maybe this guy should have been, like, here or something, or, you know, here, or somewhere... Yeah, this guy here seems shit. Back in there. Maybe, maybe even foul the uh, edge five or something. Or come out in front. And have like a... A uh, Y cage. With a strength four. Yeah, so this guy could have got in front. I don't know, because we can't... Uh, this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six. So... He could have, like, geified, right? That guy could have geified and, and uh, twice. He could have geified twice and been in front. I think that's better than, like, doing this. Because now with him not being eye-caged, um, you've got a problem, haven't you? And that problem is uh, Elliot has fast players and can get two assists. A really fucking fast player over there. That was a vanity dodge, wasn't it? He, he, he was here, right? He could have just gone diagonally there. Just threw in a vanity dodge. Dirty Dino. Probably cyanide autopathing. Runs all around. To get the better scatter direction, potentially, for the Edge 5 guy. Gets him. Doesn't have to declare handoff because this is a good game. Um, actually, I wonder, no. I wonder if, like, oh my god, well, there you go. I wonder if, uh, 
And I had sure feet. I wonder if like dodging off and passing to the other catcher was better, but maybe not if he's got sure feet. It's like rolling three plus dodges is spooky, isn't it? Right, here we go. We could see one turn from Hancock. Only move eight, but does have sidestep. Ah, but <laughs> it's against two sidestep and a tree. So yeah, okay, unlikely, unlikely one turn. Needs uh, needs the riot basically. Riot only. I, I, I yeah, I, for, I forgot that uh, Elliot had sidesteppers. So yeah, it's basically impossible, isn't it? Just got to set up for the riot. I think I think you've got better chances setting up for the riot here. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point, Pedro. Yeah, at least he completely pounded the uh, high elves into oblivion, so they definitely won't win their semi final now with so much damage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> P Diddy. That's it. But yeah, did the right play there, you know, setting up for the. Thing up the right because obviously we ain't fucking one turning against this, are you? Not with move A. Maybe with move nine, right? Fill everything and, and do something. Move nine sidestep, but move eight sidestep is pretty much impossible. Well, there you go. Um, great result for Eliod. Um, and yeah, I just think, I honestly, I think a little bit too timid from Hancock. I feel like he had to, he had to generate more blocks on offense, right? And I know it's scary because you've got to protect the ball because he's bloody Wood Elves, right? But, um, so either, either, if, if your plan is to stall out against him, then you generate contact and you get more blocks. So you're not just trading your, your non-mighty for his mighty. And then, like, make it a shootout because you've got ILs, right? You've got catches and stuff, so you, you can you can go for a, a you know roll dice and and then hope that he fails his throws and catches and stuff, and you don't fail your throws and catches. Like that's kind of what you know Hancock and I and Elliot and I did during the seasons, right? Like we had five four and four four games and whatever they were four four three four whatever whatever our games were. Um, it's 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 quite viable, right, against these fucking dancers. Like I didn't want to try and def I mean, well, I basically couldn't defend the ball against the war dancers of, of Eliod, and he definitely couldn't protect the ball against my witch elf. So so it was actually the only choice we had really was to go like uh, go into a shootout. Now Hancock didn't really have that playmaker on defense the same way as a war dancer um, or a witch elf or the specific witch elf that I had who died. He didn't have that player, so he didn't really have the sterling defense to. Uh, to, you know, to make Elliot engage in a shootout. So he would have had to have, like, you know, mass, mass uh, engage with guard and, and armor rate. And yeah, I mean, the, the star players for Elliot are the things, right? The team was all right compared to Elliot's. Yeah, two guards and armor eight, right? But obviously, Elliot had four amazing players the Edge Five. The Nia Natty and the two dancers, those four players shit all over your entire team. <laughs> However, <laughs> the rest of the team is better than, right? You know, your 11 players are better than his seven. <laughs> so you have to make it more about the 11 versus 11 than the four versus, you know, whatever your three best players were, right? That's what I think. Um,. But yeah, it was a hard match. Like it's a hard match because his his four his four players were, were game winners, weren't they? And and they did win it. But I bet if you look at the uh, blocks, yeah, thirty seven twenty nine, right? Got out blocked by Woody's, um, and pretty few blocks. Probably had to try and get, try and have to win the blocking war. Um, you know, make a blocking war out of it, and and not just sniping with with mighty blow. Because like obviously sixteen of those from Elliot were mighty blow, weren't they? Probably. Maybe he's even more with a tree. Um, so there you go. Congratulations to Eliod. Commiserations to Hancock. And as you can see, that puts Eliod versus Pybot in the semi-final. And myself versus Galabranth in the other semi-final. 
So looking very likely to have a Wood Elf uh, Necromantic final. But we shall see, right? Pybot can uh, certainly bang out Elliot pretty, like, you know, pretty easily with uh, Chaufs. And, uh, you know, maybe I could roll well versus Galabranth. But, uh, yeah, I was looking, look, I would say Galabranth's pretty favoured. And I'd say, honestly, Elliot versus Pybot. Elliot's probably got the coaching edge. But Chaufs. Chaws can just beat you, can't they? Chaws can just hurt your players very, very easily. In, but he's got 13 players, and he's got that near natty I, I do fancy Elliot to get through the final there. And uh, there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.